Welcome to Beat Diabetes, where we share information, inspiration, and hope. On today's program, we'll look at the issue of those who get neuropathy before ever being diagnosed as diabetic and why that may be the case. We'll also consider two foods that are touted as healthy and natural that may not be as healthy as people say. All right, here's an individual who says, Mike and I took on a grain challenge and I used your principles of testing. Well, I like this. This is a person who wants to test for themselves just how it works with grain. He says, brown rice only lifted Mike's number by six points at 30 minutes. So if that was all you tested, you'd say, well, so far, so good. This is great. But he says, I did the test again, and Mike was worried. He scored it 75 points higher, so a 75-point glucose rise at one hour. He says, at the two-hour mark, Mike fainted, <laughs> having peaked 135 points above my pre-meal number. So he had 135 milligrams per deciliter spike from before eating to two hours after eating. Now, in my case, I normally spike it about an hour, sometimes hour and a half, once in a while, two hours. But um, he spiked at two hours. He peaked at two hours, 135 points. That's too high, folks. That is unhealthy. And when you do that day in and day out, as some people do, even if by the next morning your fasting glucose looks pretty good, but you're going to go into a high-carb breakfast, up 135 points, down 135 points, go into lunch, up, down, supper, up, down. It's not healthy. It's not good. And I honestly think those spikes can be damaging all by themselves long before you ever get to be a diabetic. And I've heard from people who are already experiencing neuropathy and the tingling fingers and the, the pain in their feet neuropathy type pains and they're not even at diabetic levels in terms of fasting glucose or a1c but i would almost bet they're spiking frequently in their meals and throughout their days month after month and those spikes are getting to them and doing damage so anyway he found out from mike the meter the blood sugar meter that brown rice would spike him 135 points before he was done with that meal. He said, I did the same test with oats with similar results. It worked the same way with oats as it did with brown rice. Now, these two items are considered healthy by most. There's a lot of nutritionists will tell you, oh, rice is okay, but don't eat the nasty white rice. Eat the brown rice and you'll be fine. And then they'll say, well, when it comes to cereals, you don't want to eat Cocoa Puffs. You don't want to eat Trix cereal. You don't want to eat Sugar Frosted Flakes by any means. But if you eat oats, you'll be good. But he tests with Mike the meter and his blood sugar meter tells him over 100 milligrams per deciliter spike. Well, it eventually will come back down. But at two hours after the rice, it still hadn't come down. It was up uh, at its peak. So he says, uh, after doing these tests, he says, I've advised several people to use that method to get the whole picture of what foods do to us. Well, that's what this channel is all about. Test yourself. Don't take Dennis's word. Test yourself and see what's going on with you. People will criticize me and tell me I'm an idiot, tell me I'm crazy. And uh, they certainly have over that banana test I did where I tested a banana and then tested a candy bar and found out that the banana raised my blood sugar higher than the candy bar. They call me all kinds of names over that. My response is, well, test yourself and see what it does for you. Not everybody will spike that high with candy bars or bananas. Because if you don't have any tendency toward diabetes, you, you might not spike very much. But if you have diabetic tendencies... You'll spike, my friend, with both the candy bar and the banana, and it may be you'll be like me. The banana will spike you higher than the candy bar. 
But I think one of the takeaways you get from this man and from so many others that I've heard from who said the same thing, well, I tried it myself and found out my results are much different from yours. The, the takeaway is this. People who test themselves frequently, test their blood sugar, and do these post-meal tests. I'm not just talking about fasting glucose. Fasting glucose can be helpful, but the thing that will really motivate you is when you find out what specific foods are doing to you. And people who test themselves this way, they will almost always, like 99% of the time, end up in the low-carb camp. It will push them with irresistible force into the low-carb camp, the low-carb slash keto camp, because they will see with their own eyes what's happening in their bodies. You know, before blood sugar meters, we couldn't see what was going on. All we knew is when we got so diabetic, we had terrible symptoms and our feet were hurting us. We had blisters that wouldn't heal, and we end up with kidney failure and all kinds of problems, and we go, yeah, diabetes, terrible thing, but we didn't know what was going on when we ate. And then suddenly it comes out this little blood sugar monitor that now you can buy for about $20 or $30, sometimes less, and you can buy some strips. You couldn't see inside your body. You can't look in your body. Oh, my blood sugar is handling this pretty well. Or my blood sugar is really spiking on this. You couldn't see. We can't see into our body. But little Mike, the blood sugar meter, he can see. He can read your blood. He can tell you exactly what's going on with your blood. Is it saturated with sugar? Which is a very, 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 very unhealthy thing. Or is it at its normal sugar level? which is about basically one teaspoon of sugar for our entire body. So Mike can tell you, and once he starts talking to you and you start listening, you'll almost always end up in the low-carb camp. Now, until then, you may have this theory or that theory. There's all kinds of theories. Well, I think it should be just don't eat meat and everything will be fine. Well, I think it should be the ice cream and pickle diet. I think it should be this. I think it should be that. Theories abound, books abound, philosophies abound about diabetes and, and blood sugar. But Mike the Meter is going to pretty much read the same no matter who te- uses him. If you live in China, he's going to read the same for you. If you live in Africa, he'll read the same for you. If you're an American, Australian, British, wherever you live, Middle East, wherever you live, Pakistani, Indian, wherever you live, Mike the Meter is going to pretty much be the same all across the board. You eat a high-carb meal, he'll show that your blood sugar goes way up. You eat a low-carb meal, he'll show that your blood sugar pretty much hovers close to base level. He'll tell everybody that. He's not a respecter of persons. He's not a bigot. He's not a racist. Mike the Meter is the most unracist person you could ever find because he will tell you the truth no matter what race you come from, what culture you come from. And he will say the same thing over and over and over again. It's a wonder he doesn't get bored with it. High carbs make blood sugar go up. Low carbs keep it stable. And if your problem is high carbs and high blood sugar, and you've got raging high blood sugar and an A1C of 8, 10, 12, 14, the only sensible thing to do is to take the necessary steps that will cause the blood sugar to go down. And Mike will tell you that the step most important is cut those carbs. And, of course, some intermittent fasting Time-restricted eating will help as well. Okay, here's a person who says, Please, sir, make a video about honey and different effects of different types of honey and the correct way to consume them, these different types of honey, with minimal effect. Minimal effect. Well... (laughs) I had to laugh at this suggestion. I'm sorry. Uh, But there's just no reason for me to test honey. I already know what the outcome would be. Because my body doesn't care whether sugar comes from honey or whether it comes from a bowl on my table or whether it comes from high fructose corn syrup. Sugar in any and every form is going to raise my blood sugar. And There are a couple of items that I just don't see much point in testing. One is water. You know, I could do a a diabetic test. I could do a glucose test for a YouTube video. And Benedict and I could get here and we could test our blood sugar before and then drink a big old glass of water 
and then do a blood sugar about, a test about an hour later. But you'll never see me do that. I don't think. I mean, maybe I will to prove some point or another, but I just can't see any reason to do that because everybody knows that water has zero carbs. It's not going to raise blood sugar. I doubt if it low, lowers it much, although some people think that by hydrating themselves well, it will help in the fight against high blood sugar. There's just no reason to test water. It just has no carbs to it. It's going to have almost no effect on your blood sugar. So I won't test water and I won't test honey either because it's just a sweet. I, I say I won't. Maybe at some point I'll get some creative way to think of a reason why I should, or maybe just to prove to those of you that think natural is always best. And that's kind of where this guy's coming from. He's like, oh, I know that regular table sugar is bad, and and uh, but honey is natural. The little natural honeybees make the little natural honey, and they put it in a natural little bottle, and all is well. Well, my body can't tell the difference. Uh, natural is just not any improvement when it comes to sugar. Sugar is sugar is sugar is sugar. When I was in my 20s, I can remember eating, I loved cereal. I've always loved cereal. I don't eat it anymore, uh, hardly, but uh, I've always loved it. But uh, when I was in my 20s, I had big old bowl of cereal for breakfast. And I felt very noble and very righteous because instead of you know eating these nasty sweet sugars like Cocoa Puffs and all these children's cereals that are brightly colored and sugarfied, I would buy some kind of a flakes, more natural type cereal. But of course, they weren't very sweet. So to sweeten them up to where I really enjoyed them, I would pour honey on them. And I felt so noble and so righteous by pouring honey on my cereal that was, it didn't look like a children's cereal. I shudder to think what it was doing to my glucose levels. Uh, it was not a good situation, but that's just the way it was. So, uh, one of the things that Mike the Meter will show you is that no matter how natural you claim a food is, carbs, sugars, starches, are going to really, really do a number on your blood sugar. I know people like to think about the natural being superior to the unnatural, and normally that's true. And if I was someone held a club uh, all over my head and said, I'm going to beat you senseless if you don't eat either A, a potato, or B, a big old piece of cake, with ice cream on top, I would go for the potato just because it's natural. They'd both raise my blood sugar terribly. But at least the potato would be natural, so I, I guess I would lean that way. But nobody's ever done that. My whole life, believe it or not, nobody has ever forced me to choose between a potato and cake and ice cream. Nobody's ever forced me. And so I can say no to both, and nobody's going to complain. Nobody's going to hurt me. Nobody's going to do anything to me. Did you ever wonder why YouTubers are always asking you to like, share, and comment? It's not really that we're all egotists and we love to have a lot of positive reinforcement. It's because we know that the YouTube algorithm keeps track of these things and rewards videos that have a lot of viewer interaction by promoting them to other people. So when people go to YouTube, they'll find that video near the top of their feed, and in turn, these videos will become more popular still. So if this channel has been a blessing to you, help us out by clicking the thumbs up, making a comment, and sharing it with someone you think might benefit from it. Thank you so much, and God bless you.